Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mama Aizad. Uh, I'm I'm from Scoot right now. Previously was from Singapore Power with these people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so okay. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, testing with preprocessor flags. Uh, that was initially initially my title, and the scenario I used this technique for was for testing. But uh, at the end of the talk, you guys can decide if you guys want to use this technique for any other kind of scenarios as well. Uh, but <coughs> while I was going through the talk, while I was uh, refining the talk, like cleaning up the talk and everything, I realized that maybe it's not uh, really interesting with preprocessor flag because uh, I don't really need to set the GCC preprocessor flag for this. So I'm still uh, at a loss uh, of forwards. Uh, on this uh, term, whether is it preprocessor flag, whether is it active compilation. So I'm just going to go ahead uh, and name it. Oh, that's slow, okay. <laughs> that's with active compilation condition because this is the only thing that I need to set to make it happen. Uh, I, tried, I tried it without the GCC preprocessor definitions and uh, it still works fine. So I don't think we need the GCC preprocessor for this. Uh, if you are not sure what I'm uh, referring to, so just bear, uh, just bear with me. I will go through everything and then at the end of it, you will uh, understand what I am referring to. Okay. So, I think when you guys are doing testing and everything, you guys are quite familiar with this kind of course. Like you need to like set a mock data to it and everything. Then after that, you can uh, run your test. Uh, basically, if you want to run your test uh, directly from the network call itself, uh, it's going to take... It's going to depend on your network connection, the speed and everything, and that is not stable at all. So that's why we uh, prefer to use mock data for this. So, but then what I'm going to show you is that what if there is another way to like streamline this kind of code, you know, because this kind of code is kind of like messy. I don't need this kind of code in my uh, code base. You know, and uh, if for example, I have a mock data variable which is open, which is accessible, internal uh, access control. If somebody were to decide to swizzle someone like Kenneth trying to hack into my phone, into my app, and then found out that, hey, I have a mock data, you know, open access. Oh, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Everyone knows you have that Pokemon uh, hacking, uh, you know, technique. So, swizzle allows you to, like, uh, do all these kind of things. So, I want that. I want, I want it to keep, uh, maybe I want this variable to be private. So even if someone were to try to swizzle it, you can't, because it's uh, private. So, okay, let's move on. So, let's move away from this kind of technique. And how do we do that? Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight into the steps. Uh, I can talk on and on for hours on uh, why this thing should be done. But uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, really up to you to decide on which kind of technique you guys want to use for your kind, uh, for your app, for your project, and for the timeline that you guys uh, have to deliver and all that. Okay. So first thing first, create a new configuration called test. Okay. So just go into your project, into the info. You can see that the debug and release are already there. So just create another configuration called test. You can name it any other configuration you want. Maybe if you guys have a workflow like UAT, SIT and all that, maybe you want to create configurations for that too. But uh, just for this scenario, I'm just going to focus on uh, the test scenario. Okay? So the second step once you're done with this. Okay. So if you are using CocoaPod, once you set, once you create a new configuration, right, you will notice that there is something missing. Okay, so basically, after you build, uh, after you create a new configuration, you will need to do a port install again if you are using CocoaPod. If you are using Cartage, I guess you just need to do a Cartage update. Yeah, so this will then create the uh, exit config files for the test configuration. Okay, so this is uh, quite an important step because if you don't do this, then when you try to build it, yeah, it will return a lot of uh, build errors. So, then the next step is going to be going to your scheme and set your build configuration to test. 
Okay, so uh, for this one, I think is uh, by default it should be on default debug configuration. Uh, okay, then the next one, yeah. So this is the thing. This is the only thing that I, I need to do. Uh, so inside the my project under build settings, I just need to set under the test configuration. Just add another variable called called test. I mean, I can uh, name it anything I want. I can uh, capitalize everything, or I can just use, you know, all small small caps. It works, uh, but you just need to change your hexif uh, flag into the small letters character if you want to use the small letter character. Okay, but just uh, for standardized uh, session purposes, since uh, the debug and release are already capitalized, I'm also going to have my text. Uh, test variable capitalized as well. Okay. And this is what I meant uh, by I don't need to set the GCC preprocessor definitions, the test equals to one. At first, I thought I really needed to do this because uh, they have the debug equals to one, but I removed this and it still works. So that is why, hence my confusion on whether. This thing is uh, actually using the GCC preprocessor or the Swift compilation. Okay. So yeah, you don't need to do this. Okay. And then uh, in your code, you can just do something like this: exit test, get the bundle uh, URL path for your mock data, and then uh, if it's not in the test configuration, if if you want to make it more specific, you can put like help, else if uh, debug. Then I'm just set the URL to the real server uh, calling the API. Okay? Then get the URL and then alarm fire whether you use the uh, real URL pointing to a server or URL pointing to a bundle path, it will return uh, accordingly. So that's there's really no extra codes here. Alamo Fire just uh, helps you to deal with it. So, that's it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So, uh, but I would like to present this talk because uh, a lot of people ask me, like, you know, if, if they go into the S code and everything, right, in the settings, how, how is this useful? So, this is one of uh, the ways that it can be useful to you. If you are using uh, CI CD like Fastlane, it's as simple as just setting the configuration. So maybe in my debug build, I don't want to test with the real server. I still want to use my mock data while building the app on my phone. I just easily set the configuration to test, and everything will just point to my mock data. Yeah, and uh, this kind of helps my uh, testers because. Uh, Sometimes they just want a definite kind of uh, data. They don't want to have like 100 kind of data. They just want to test on two or three definite data so that uh, they can easily like test the app and uh, easily pass the testing. Yeah. So let's go to the code demo. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let's close it. Okay. So the first step, go to your Pokemon, uh, okay, my project, Pokemon, uh, go into the info, and then just build the test configuration. So when you press plus, plus button, they will ask you whether you want to duplicate the debug configuration or want to duplicate the release configuration. So since it's because uh, I'm using it for testing, I also want to use some of the debug uh, stuff. I duplicate it from the debug configuration, okay? So once that is done, this is, uh, if you are using CocoaPod, you see, the, yeah, this is where you need to check. If, as you can see, there's debug release, debug release, but you don't have test for that. So what you need to do is just go here, just do a simple port install, okay? Right. Go back here, go back here, port, and you can see, that's the exit config for the test configuration right now. Okay. So once you are done with that, just go here, go to edit scheme. Okay. So 
you see, even on in the run, I can uh, run my, I can build my app using the debug, test, or release configuration. Okay. So, but uh, since this is just for the test scenario, I am just going to go to my test setting in the build configuration. By default, it's uh, at the start it should be this debug. So you just after you build that uh, configuration, right? After you create that new configuration, just make sure you are pointing to test for this. Okay. So, uh, and, oh, okay. The last one you need to do is uh, go into the build settings. Okay. Uh, some of you might ask me like, why don't you just go to the target? Well, the target is actually a subclass of the project. So if you set anything in the project, all your other target will uh, inherit it. So just make sure you do your settings in the project. Every other target will have it. So go into your project. Uh, I'm just going to find, search for debug. Okay. All right. So this is the one where you can delete this, and this is the important one. Just add another one called test. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. So uh, in my code, okay, it's a very simple architecture. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for production wise, please make sure you guys have everything else covered. Okay, so in my in my function which I use to call my uh, API to get the response, this is all I need to do. Exit test, and then uh, if it's in the test configuration, load my mod, load my mock data. If uh, in the debug configuration or in the release pool, uh, configuration, load the response from the server itself. And once that is done, if you are using Alamo Fire, Alamo Fire will uh, know what to do with it, and they will just get the mock data if uh, you are using the uh, URL path. Okay. So I'm just going to show you my mock data. My mock data is only there's only one. There's only one uh, character called uh, Lino One. I'm not sure if you guys know this uh, character, Pokemon character, no? Okay, uh, it's not that popular. Uh, so, uh, just for this talk, I'm just going to show one uh, character as compared to 100 characters uh, being retrieved from the server itself. Okay. So, first thing first, uh, let me go to my test. Okay. So, as you can see, just now my mock data, there's only one. So I'm just going to check whether there's one. And then in uh, the name is going to be Lino1. That's it. All right. So I just run my test. Uh, this should be going to the test configuration. Oh. Oh, no. I forgot the system is simulator. <laughs> okay. This one is faster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry about it. I forgot about switching on the simulator <laughs> in the first place. So it's gonna take some time to load. Let me see if I can just uh just keep my mic. Yeah, this can be slow. Just build it. Ok, 
okay well um, meeting point to view okay yes i'm going to run oh okay it's putting okay so i'm going to just uh, build a normal one on the simulator itself just to show you the difference uh, that's the cool thing about S-Code nowadays uh, you can do parallel testing on different devices yeah. uh, oh. uh, okay so I can do much to build right now See the test succeeded. There's only one, and uh, the name is Lino One. And if I go back to my mock data, that's exactly it. But if I'm, I'm going to build it uh, on the debug version, okay, you know what? I build it. Okay, it's going to return you a hundred kind of a uh, result for this okay so if maybe if I want to just test the debug uh, the debug configuration itself just go to the test let's go to the debug close it and run the test again and you can see my test will fail right now because uh, they'll be returning 100 and I think the first character is uh, Blasi, okay, no idea what that thing is. Blasi, okay. Blasi, okay. Alright, yeah, there you go. So uh, it's returning 100, and uh, the first character is Blasi for this. Okay, so uh, that's it for my talk. Uh, I hope uh, it's. Uh, it will be very useful to you guys on uh, to help you guys streamline the code using the configuration and everything. Uh, it uh, can also help in uh, streamlining your CI CD, setting different configurations instead of having like uh, different kind of environment for these kind of things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so going on. Okay. Question time. So let me know if you have any questions. So, uh, does that mean that the code is not compiled to the back end itself? So, what is it? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Is it a few in the back end itself? Okay, so now I'm building A. So does the code from the B side? No, no, it won't do. It won't do. Yeah, that's the that's how great this thing is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So for example, like maybe for testing, I don't want to set a variable, but in the debug, I want to set it as let. Yeah. So this is one way you can do it. Yeah. You can set different access control for this. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, 
a question for the, for the test box. So the idea is like to avoid uh, exposing the like, variables in the main app, right? Yeah. Private extension, internal extension, that kind of thing? Yeah, like just like an extension and like just like for data or whatever. Yeah, you, you can do something like that. So, like extension, maybe uh, this one is the private extension, and this one is the internal extension. Your private extension, you want it to be in the main app, but uh, the internal extension, you want it for your testing configuration. Okay. So, just before the extension, just put an hex if uh, test for the internal extension and for the Private one, you might want to set hex if debug or hex if release. Yeah, depending on your configuration name. Yeah. Yeah, because I think like my main question behind is like show like the code that I'm like it's not adding to the app or the package. Um, but you got like more code in the file, right? So if you got like a lot of details uh, into the same view model. Yeah, that's true. Then that's it's, true. Like, harder for the next developer or yeah. Yep, uh, I, I won't deny that. Yeah, it will become a little bit messier depending on how you, you know, if you have a lot of uh, hexy and everything, yes, it's going to be messy. Yeah, it's going to be messy. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. <laughs> Maybe a suggestion. Okay. Uh, if your project is very, very, very big, um, if you want to use this one configuration to build your app for, let's say it takes five days to build your app. If you use a different configuration, uh, let's say even just building on the app, let's say if you debug the app, yeah, it's code will rebuild the whole thing and takes five days. As code will rebuild the whole thing. different configuration. Okay. So like, I'll say like in the DIY factory, there will be a debug build somewhere. And for test, there's a, there's a separate one. So yeah. because when you try to run, hey, there's, there's no test, try to build the whole thing. So in, I think in the case of this example, what I'm trying, I noticed that the only difference between the, the debug and test is just the URL path. So yeah. one way I, Hi, <laughs> uh, my name is Michael. Um, so, what is Engineers SG? Um, Engineers SG is like kind of like a non-profit community initiative that I created like two years back uh, to kind of help document the Singapore tech and startup scene. So, basically, you can find all the videos on Engineers SG. You read any one of the meetups, you see me lugging around a suitcase or some sorts. Um, why did I create Engineers SG? Many years ago, somebody irritated me by asking me the questions, where are the engineers? So I was like, I felt there was a marketing problem. <laughs> we were not promoting ourselves well enough, right? So uh, so I thought it was a good way to, I guess, I guess uh, for me, I, from, yeah, from uh, when I was a teenager, I was kind of into like videography and stuff. I even start my own little podcast network with some of the bloggers in the midst who probably remember that on fire. Okay. Yeah, so I thought it would be a good thing to have to kind of record the, the, the different meetups so that people who are who have never been to any of the meetups and come and, and watch it and kind of like get a sense of how the community is like and maybe to for even new people who are joining uh, the, the tech the tech industry can kind of like watch these videos and get a sense of how the community, uh, the people that we are, the community and, and what and